This is an image that I worked on about six years ago. I'm going to be going through all the different layers that I used to create this. I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to show you the defringe command and the remove white mat command. There's also a remove black mat command as well. And I'm going to show you how that will do a significant job in improving the mixture between the different layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to show you this initial layer. What's back here is just another image of the sky that I had taken at some point. And it has this yellow cast to it. Even the blues have this strange yellow tint to it. So the first thing I did was compensate that by using the selective color. So this next layer that we have here, I'm going to zoom in. What I did was I took a, a, an image of this and I created a black and white out of it. Now the reason that I had done this is because I'm going to be putting more images over the top of this and what's going to happen is if I had this in color and I put more color on top of it, it was going to distort the initial color. However, all I wanted to do was create a single um, solid layer that was going to essentially mask over this sky that's behind it. But I, st I wanted to keep the shape. I didn't want the color, and you're going to see why in a moment. I also want to show you this white fringe that's going on here. And essentially when I created the mask, and again, this was some six years ago, and there's other ways of approaching this now, but uh, a lot of the same thing is happening where Photoshop doesn't quite know what to do with this if you're using a magic wand or a brush or um, Mask Pro by On One Software. But what I'm going to do, or what I did, was I then went up another layer of the same thing, and I did a multiply of just the trees. Instead of having this white fringe, I then duplicated that layer with a multiply and what it did was it gave it this soft edge. I had probably feathered this or something and did a fill. Again, I, I have no idea specifically what I did at the time. But the intent to that was to add some weight to these trees. And even notice how there's a, a, a shift in, in density. Then the final layer that I put on the top of this was a multiply and this is where the color is coming in. All right. So so this is how I had achieved this by putting down a black and white then I put down some density in the trees and then I put down the color as a multiply. The next thing that I had done with this was I put in this boat. This was just an image where I had put a mask onto it. But as you can see, it creates this white fringing going on. Um, to compensate for that, the next layer is a multiply. But now you can see what it did. It completely filled in all the rope that's going on up inside of the, uh, the boat. And then I took it one more step and I did it again with another multiply layer. And now the end result is what what I was looking for. However, you can see how this completely filled in this color. And this would not be good in every situation where it went from that um, level of detail to that lack of detail because it's so dark. However, this whole image has a very ominous tone to it, so it worked out well in this case. And then I finished off the work on here. Down here, this layer just does a little patchwork, and it add, added this. I think I was covering something up for some reason. 
and then I filled fixed it there. So this was the end result that I had created. I'm now going to take this one step further and use the defringe command. Now what we're going to try and do is remove this white fringing that's going on here. Essentially to make this work, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to go back to the beginning here and I'm going to go back to this initial building. Now in order to compensate for those trees, I created another layer that had these softened trees. However, what I can do, quite instead, is for what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to duplicate the layer uh, just so that we aren't working on that original layer. Then I'm going to throw away that mask that I had and I'm going to apply it. So essentially what what the problem here is you can't use this feature with a mask on it. Okay, It has to be just a solid layer which is one of the ne negative parts of this. However if you do your layering where you keep this layer just as a backup and then this layer we would we would name it remove white matting then we'll know what's going on and we can throw it into a folder together like this. Okay. But essentially, with that, I'm going to go up under Layer. Now here's a problem. I, I, I can't do anything about this because this menu is so long it runs right off the bottom of the screen. Uh, however, I assure you, at the bottom, hanging just off this screen, it actually says Defringe, Remove Black Mat, and Remove White Mat. So again, I, there's nothing I can do about this. So I'm going to go down to Remove White Mat. And as you can see, it did something. It removed all that white and filled it in. Essentially, it's doing um, an overlay. It's going to do. It's doing a multiply. It's it's doing something. Um, but what happens is, when I put that top layer over it, it's essentially doing what this other layer was trying to do. And I don't need that anymore because now it actually looks better than it did before. And to prove that, I'm gonna do this. And what you see here, when I get in close, you can see that it, it it's kind of pixelated. I mean, it looks okay. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. But watch when I do what I did. There's so much more detail in here now. Can you see that? Look at that. Okay, so you can see the the total benefit of doing doing it that way. So now I'm going to show you. Actually, we don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to show you the boat. Now once again, we have this matting problem going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to put the two layers inside of the folder. I'm going to name this Remove White Matting. And then, I'm going to hide that. I'm going to remove that mask. And then I'm going to go Layer Matting Remove White Mat. And then I can turn that on. Look at that. Looks great, doesn't it? Now, show you the difference. This is what it looked like before. And that's how it looks now. Now, I'm going to zoom out. And I want to show you something and why this makes a difference. Look down here in the density in the boat. This is how it was originally, but when I do what I did, that doesn't happen. Essentially, you're you're creating the same effect up here, but it's not filling in that um, the the same density that I ended up putting into this image the first time around.
So now don't get me wrong, this, this doesn't look as good for this image. However, there is a distinct difference in how the tool operates. Okay? So I can turn the rest of that back on and turn this on here. Now I do want to point out that uh, what I just did added some noise in through here. Um, but isn't that crazy? How that it ha it it doesn't add that same density, but you are left with uh, all the extra, um, all those extra lines that were going on. So, so essentially, that's the image. All right, so now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go layer matting, remove black mat, just to show you what happens, which is the exact opposite, but you may need that in your image. And then I'm going to go layer matting defringe. Now this one gives you the option to go in X amount of pixels. Okay, so now this one you might want to use instead of the white mat. So anyway, you get the idea. I've used this uh, technique a few times over the years and thought it would be helpful to show you. Maybe one day you would need it too. If you found this helpful and would like to learn more about Photoshop retouching and becoming a better retoucher, please go to www.theartofretouching.com for more tips and tricks. While you are there, you can sign up as a member to receive access to more video tutorials and articles that are not going to be replayed on YouTube or iTunes video streams. As a member, you will receive access to our forums, reduced price classes, and whatever other things we can think of.